we have a lot of social cues in our show, um, and they're kind of put into situations that have the cool mutant twist on it. But uh, being able to just talk about things kind of under the radar, it's super important. And being able to connect to people who are different and have just special qualities that sometimes are looked at as disabilities almost mm -hmm. in a way, um, to be able to show people that there are different groups and different ways to express your special, yeah. <laughs> your special shine, your gifted shine. Yeah. I think that, I think that what we try to do is, is you know, everyone's born equal. And, mm -hmm. you know, that's written into the Constitution and that is part, very much the centre of what the X-Men world is about. If you take that as the premise, there are some people who think that some people are born more equal than others. And uh, it just so happens that our show is, you know, about civil rights and was created because of the civil rights movement. And therefore... It has resonances in any society, but right now, specifically so, because, because you know, what's playing out on a daily basis is so extraordinary. So, but the second season is, I think, really interesting because it, you know, we've got two mutant factions who, one that believes in just like mutant power and going, we've tried to make it work with the humans and we can't make it work, we're going to look after us. And then our, the Mutant Underground, our version is like, we've got to try and help people live together and harmoniously. I mean, you say about living harmoniously, you want to live harmoniously. You can't even do that as a family, guys. Mm -hmm. Who right. are you to... We're used to this, aren't we? Who yeah. are you to tell people how to live if you can't even <laughs> coexist as a family? He raises a valid point. That's, that's actually very true. I've never thought about that. Well, it's, I think at any family element, um, it's just... Losing somebody in your family is extremely hard and everybody deals with it in a different way And I think that my character going into this season is kind of trying to pick up the pieces and kind of be the adult when she's Still trying to figure out her own stuff going on and she has other things in her mind as well as you <laughs> Like just yeah. other things that we keep on hiding from her family um, Just keeps getting dig deeper and deeper and deeper in most, in most dramas, when a family is torn asunder, you, you root for them to get back together. Yeah. But that would be extremely dangerous in this, in this, in this situation, wouldn't it? That's a very good point. My, I mean, in the first episode, you see uh, Andy and Lauren's first dream sequence. So back when we use Fenris, uh, you find out that it's much deeper than just a power that they use together. They're intellectually, their minds, have, they're pretty much have the same mind. Um, and I think that throughout this entire season, she's just going through this thing where she misses her brother so dearly and she misses the person that she loves, but she knows if he comes back, she's going to turn into something that the world can't have. Stephen, I know you're a West Ham fan. Yes. Um, if you could give a power to one player, <laughs> who would it be and what power would you give them? If I could give to a West Ham player? Yeah. What power would I give them? I suppose it would have to be I would give... Fabianski, our, our, our new keeper, you know, just hands the size of the goals. Just what? giant hands. Like oversized like Mickey this. Mouse gloves. O oversized Mickey Mouse gloves. Giant. Just giant. Are they, are they... Like those fingers that you, you yeah. know, like those, but hands. Are they always that big? They're, no, he or can just he... think them that big. Right, okay, so when it comes to a penalty, yeah. all of a sudden, he goes, boom. <laughs> they like blow up. 